there's a legend that Sophocles, approaching ninety, was sued in the Athenian courts by his son, who accused his father of senility. The old man replied by quoting from his latest play, the choral ode in praise of Athens, and was acquitted on the spot. The play was Oedipus at Colonus, set in the rural suburb where Sophocles himself was born. It would be the last of more than 120 plays, and one of only seven that survived. I'm Michael York with a soap opera update circa 406 BC. At the end of our last episode, the blinded monarch had predicted for himself a life of exile, wandering with his daughters until the time should come for some extraordinary end. Oedipus at Colonus is about that time, a logical concern for an aging playwright whose career had spanned the glory that was Greece, from victory over the Persians to the splendors of democratic Athens. And now, after decades of war, to the brink of defeat by Sparta, even as Sophocles struggled to rally and remind his fellow Athenians, the enemy was camped only 12 miles away. At Colonus, a few months before, Athenian cavalry had won a minor skirmish with the Thebans, who had allied with themselves with Sparta. There wasn't much, but it was on such slender hope that Sophocles built this play, Oedipus at Colonus. <laughs> Antigone, your father is old and blind. And here's another new place, eh, daughter? The outcast in his wanderings. Country is it or town? Whose charity do we ask for today? A few scraps, that's all. The bare necessities. If it's less than that, we're given still we're content. Time passes, suffering must be endured until we learn patience. And I was born a king. Can you see some place where I can sit down? On the common earth by the roadside? Or a cool grove of trees sacred to some local god or other? And while I'm resting, dear girl, find out where we are today. It's always wiser for strangers like us to talk to the locals, discover from them how the land lies, and take their advice. My poor father. You've suffered enough. In the far distance, I can see the city. Towers and walls. But this seems to be a holy place. There are laurel bushes, olive trees, and vines all running wild. In the grove, birds sing everywhere. A whole choir of nightingales making music together. 
There's a naked rock, like a seat. It carved by the hand of nature. No. You can sit there, rest your legs. It's been a long journey. You're an old man. Um, suit me down there. I'm blind. Can't do it to myself. I don't need to be told after all this time. So, where do you think we are? Athens, for sure. This place. Adam. Yes, everyone on the road told us that much. Oh. Do you want me to find somebody? Ask where we are? Yes, if there's anyone to ask. People live here, certainly. No need to go looking. I think I can see somebody coming. This way, Antigone? Is he coming this way? Yes, he is, but be careful what you say. He's standing directly in front of you. You can see, my friend, that my daughter's eyes do service for us both. And she tells me we're in luck and that you perhaps can answer some of our questions. Before you ask anything, get up from that seat and go away! Uh, uh, that place is taboo! You're trespassing on holy ground! What place is this? What god is honoured here? It's sacrilege even to enter, let alone sit down. But no one can live there. Terrifying goddesses have made it their sanctuary. Nightmare creatures from the mind's darkness and primeval earth! What are their names? I must pray to these guardians. Here we call them the kindly ones, whose eyes are merciless and see everything. In other countries, they have other names. Furies. I hope they will see and be kindly to me and accept my prayers. Because I shall rest here and never leave this place. What do you mean? Things that were prophesied. Signs that I recognize. Listen to me, then. You seem friendly, and I don't want to see you in any trouble. Got troubles enough by the look of you. And I guess you've seen better days. Being among the well-born and powerful, I shouldn't wonder. Just you stay there. Just there, where I found you. And I'll tell everyone what you've just said. The locals, I mean. Not the people from the city. And it's up to them. They'll decide what's best. To let you stay here. Or to move you on. Gone, Antigone. The stranger? Yes, he's gone now. We're alone again, Father, the two of us. You can say what you like. Goddesses of darkness, whose faces are too terrible for living men to look on without fear. This place is your sanctuary. And this stone. The spot where I first found rest in a strange land. Look kindly now upon me, and remember the god Apollo, who, when he foretold all the horrors and miseries of my life, also prophesied that my long journey would come to an end, and I would find rest in an alien country, in a holy place, sacred to the Furies, Goddesses of punishment and absolution. In that place, the god promised, your painful life will come to an end. With good luck and blessings on the fortunate people who give you shelter, and a lasting curse on the others who cast you out. Confirmation of the god's intention will be given to me in thunder and lightning and by shaking of the earth. Now I feel certain great goddesses daughters of darkness and the night's terrors, that you have guided me to your secret place with unseen hands. Let me sit here on this sacred stone. A man who never drinks wine, among you to whom wine is sacrilege. Queens of the darkness, inhabitants of all our nightmares, what was foretold so long ago, bring to consummation. Let my life end in peace and serenity. 
Unless you think that I, who have suffered more than any man living has suffered, am beyond all redemption. You were born with the original creation of the world, children of the first darkness. Hear my prayer. City of Athens, now protect me. The queen of cities, with the wisest of gods as her patron. May she look with pity on the shrunken carcass, the pale shadow of the man who was Oedipus, king of Thebes. Father, I can see some old men coming. They're searching everywhere. They're looking for you. Take my hand and lead me further into the trees, where we can hear without being seen. It will be safer and wiser to learn what they intend before we meet them. What do you see? Who is this man? Where does he come from? What's his fault? He slipped away. Where is he hiding? You stop at nothing. Look everywhere. Comb every bush and thicket. Leave nothing undone. He must be a tramp or a wandering beggar of some sort. And he's old. A foreigner, too. Not one of us, I'm certain of that. He'd be so bold. That's what proves that holiness. When only the goddesses have their habitation, in the walls of the furies. Very word makes me shiver. With eyes averted, we pass by, heads bowed, muttering silent prayers of devotion. In a reverent stillness, now the word goes, this trap is in there. Where the direction I look, there's no sign of him. Or oh, his glass is. the man. As the proverb says, my ears are my eyes. This is a disgrace for a fight to see you or hear such words. I mean no disrespect to the spirits of the place. Who is this old man? You scarred us now. Not one gentleman whom young or old could call blessed with good luck. And for proof, look how I see through another's eyes. Hold my anchor to this slim cable, my guide and guardian through the dangerous world. Yeah, God. Yeah. Oh, is. He's blind. Were you born to this misery? Your face is scarred with long life and deep suffering. But now you are causing a deeper disgrace. Don't bring down a greater curse on your head by the sacrilegious trespassing. Not one step more. Further within there is a silent grassy glade. The secret, most sacred green sanctuary where the clear water springs. And the ritual offerings are poured. Honey and water from that pure stream. Now, must you I'm ever exhausted. I'm ever far from home, you little wanted. Can my voice be heard at this distance? You can speak without fear. We'll listen, but not from forbidden ground. Can be silent, or else come down to his ear. Well, child, what's wisest? What shall we do? This place is holy. It's best to conform to local custom. Pay respect where it's due. Take my hand there. Have it already, Colonel. I'm at your mercy, gentlemen. If I must come from this sanctuary, don't betray my trust. No one will stop you from resting here, old man, or drive you away by force. 
Is it further? Yes, further. Further still. Still in the way, girl. Give ice in the seat by the law be required. Not for the first time. <laughs> be careful. Don't fall. Further into darkness with every step. With my eyes on it, yes. If you think of fear, if you respect their feelings, we can hope they'll treat us kindly. If anyone will. I've trusted you always, everywhere. You are a stranger. Take our advice. Learn to respect for our state respects. In your situation, it would be wise to revere the bit that we revere. Then lead me, Antigone, to some safe place where I can speak without offense to these good people. It makes sense to do what they ask with a good grace. I saw enough. Not one step more beyond that slab of bare rock. Here, no further. Shall I sit or stand up? It is a sit. To your left is an naked block of stone. Go down like a bench. Sit there. I'll leave this on it step by step. <laughs> my humiliation is complete. Move as I move and keep tight hold of my arm. I can take the weight. I'm young and strong enough to cope. I, I can do nothing. Helpless like a child. Poor old man. Now you can relax and tell us your story. Where were you all? Why? Traveling these stony tracks so far from home, so ravaged and so old. I have no home. Don't ask me then. Don't ask you what? What are you hiding? I beg you, don't ask me who or what I am. You don't know what you're asking. Why not? The story of my family. Oh, I'm not. Dear child, what now? What shall I say? Who is your son? You must be some man's son. Must I relive this suffering every day? You've led them to the edge. You'll have to speak. All right. I can't hide it. There's no other way. Tell us now. We're a dog. What a time you take. Does the name Lias mean anything? <laughs> the line of... Lacticus in Thebes. Dear God! The damnation of a man called Oedipus. Is it Oedipus? Does the mere name frighten you? It's only a, a word. Get out! And again. And again. Get out! Antigone, what's happening? What are they doing? We are with the other way. our country. You promised me safety. Does your word mean nothing? We didn't know who you were then! No one will blame us if we pay you back in your own coin. You deceived us! And if we choose to break a promise, that's what you deserve! So now, get out of our territory! Take yourself back where you came from! Don't Do pay your breath with your breath! Or pay you the soil we Listen! I know you are just. I'm not without conscience. You have some moral sense and no right from wrong. If you feel you must refuse to listen to my father, whose offence was committed in ignorance, and who endures old age and blindness, and a terrible story blasting his name forever. Pity my tears, I beg you my share of his misery. He lives in darkness, alone. Let my eyes speak to yours and plead for his agony, as your own daughter's eyes would, with an intense compassion for a father's degradation. You are gods to us. Our destinies are in your hands. Think of your wives, your children, your homes, everything in your lives that matters and pity our pain. The least of mortal men is the gods' concern. Our innocence or guilt will bring us all to the same dust. No, you are Oedipus' daughter, and we pity you as much for that as we pity him for all his suffering. But we fear the gods and obey their lord. What else can we do? 
so much then for a good name and a reputation for honorable dealing. Well, worth nothing when it comes to the point. Athens of all cities is famous for it. Her godlike hospitality. Any refugee on the run from his homeland, here, if anywhere, he'll find a welcome. But not in my case, apparently. In my case, you lure me from the rock where I found sanctuary, and now you will drive me with curses to your frontier and kick me out. And why is this? Because you're afraid of my name. Don't blacken the good name of Athens with acts unworthy of her reputation. I came as a refugee. I asked for rest and protection, which you promised. Will you break that promise? Because of ugly scars on my eyes and an uglier history, the gods see my sufferings. Something of their holiness lingers about my wounds. And in my wretchedness, I come to bring your people a blessing. When your king or some person in authority arrives, you will hear and understand the whole story. Till then, don't deceive me. And don't betray me by breaking your word. Proceed. What you say is worth hearing, old man. Full of spiritual meaning. Wisely argued. In well chosen words. And must be taken seriously. Our leader must hear you. He will decide. And where is he, this man who will make the decision? In the city of our ancestors. But the local man who found you and alerted us has gone to fetch him. May his coming bring a blessing to himself, his people, and to me. An act of kindness brings its own reward. Dear gods, am I seeing things? I can't be certain. Antigone, what's happening? There's a woman riding a horse. Sicilian, I think. She's wearing a hat with a broad brim to protect her from the sun, so her face is in shadow. And I can't be... But I think it's her. But it can't be. Kenneth, I must be dreaming. But I think it is. It is. She's smiling. It's Mayday. She's waiting for what is Mayday. What are you talking about? It's your daughter, my sister, here before our eyes. Listen, you'll know that voice. I've come a long way, dearest father, dearest <laughs> sister. Now that I've found you, I can hardly see you. My eyes are so full of tears. My child, is it really you? I'm so old, father, so tired. You managed to find me. So difficult to find. Touch me, dear girl. There's a hand for both. Oh, both oh, my children. <laughs> My sisters. These dreadful suffering. Hers and mine. Mine too. We all suffer. <laughs> Why have you come, girl? I'm worried for you. Because you missed me? That's too. <laughs> but the main reason was to bring you news. Huh? I traveled with this one servant I can still trust. Oh. Where are your brothers? Couldn't they help? They are. Where they are, they have terrifying problems. As I can imagine. They behave no better than Egyptians, the pair of them. The Egyptian fashion is for the men to stay at home sewing while the women go out and break their backs and earn the living. So your two brothers lays about at home, gossiping by the fire like a couple of housewives. Leaving you two girls to cope with all the problems, carry the burden of my miseries, and share my hard life. This one, Antigone, ever since she grew up and became a woman instead of a girl, she hasn't been on the road with me. My, my nurse, my guide, my governess in, in wastelands and forests, often without shoes and hungry, and drenched by the rain, sunburned, exhausted. She has never crossed her mind to go home and live comfortably. To look after her father, to get bread between his teeth has been her first concern. Oh, well, Miss Maggie, what's the news? What has made you leave home and travel such a distance to speak to your father? It must be serious, I know that. Nothing frivolous would bring you so far. My own troubles, dearest father. Finding where you were and how you were living, I'd rather forget. 
Living through it was bad enough, so the telling would be no easier. More to the point is the disastrous story of your unlucky sons. That's what I've come to tell you. At first, well aware of the curse that has for so long plagued our family, they were more than keen that Crayon should take the throne, hoping by that that the city would not be defiled and that our family's long-lived guilt would finally be purged. But now, some god of motiveless destruction, an unprincipled criminality seems to possess them both. A mania, a lust for power has infected them, and they compete with each other to seize control and rule in peace. Heticles acted first. Our mad-headed younger brother, he outmaneuvered Polynices, deposed him, and kicked him out of the city. And the word is that Polynices is in exile in Argos, raising mercenary troops and making diplomatic alliances to invade Thebes and subdue the Theban people, so that Argos will either destroy them completely or make Polynices master of the city. Father, this is no fabrication of mine. It's the dreadful truth. How long must we wait before the gods will stop punishing you? They will stop someday then. You hope for some deliverance, some pity at the end? Oh, yes. These latest oracles, if I understand them correctly. What oracles? What do they say about me? That Thebes' safety will one day depend on you and they must get you back, alive or dead. What can they want from a man like me? Their power, they say, draws its energy from you. What? After I'm dead, is, is that the idea? The same gods who humiliated you support you now. Bad bargain for an old man destroyed in his youth. Be that as it may, Crayon is coming. And for those very reasons, he'll be here today. To do what? Don't mince matters. To get you settled as close as possible to the borders of Thebes. To keep you handy without actually setting foot on Theban soil. What use am I outside the borders? They must honour your grave. Or face the consequences. Lady Wood should have taught them that, not oracles. And that's why they want to keep you under observation, just across the frontier, in effect, a prisoner. And will they bury me on Theban soil? Never. Your guilt for your father's death forbids it. Do either of my two sons know about this? They both know it, and they know what it means. They know it, the swine. And they would rather keep power in their own hands than bring their father home. That's a dreadful thing to say. But I'm afraid it's true. Then it's my hope that no god will step in to put out the fire between them or prevent this fratricidal battle. Let me be their judge in the bloody business they're preparing now, and I will sentence them both, the one in power to lose it forever, the other never to return from exile. Neither one of them raised a finger when I was banished and thrown out from the city. Did they even care when the anathema was pronounced and the gate shut behind me? They said nothing, did nothing. Let them all come, all the great ones of Thebes. If you good people and the powerful presences in this place combine to protect me, this land of Athens will win a great champion to its side. And those who persecute me will be punished for it. We have great sympathy, Oedipus, for you and for your daughter. And your assertion that you will bring mysterious good fortune persuades me to offer you some positive advice. Please tell me, I'll do what you say. Make expiation at once to the goddesses whose holy sanctuary you violate. If you will instruct me, uh, teach me the ritual. Cleanse your hands. Then fill the cup you will find there with water from the pure spring that never runs dry. I understand, and when I have this water... Spread sprays of olive branches and pray. But what prayers? That's the most important thing. That these goddesses, the Furies, whom we know to be kindly spirits, will be merciful towards you, a beggar. Pray quietly and reverently. You or someone else standing in for you. Then come away. And don't turn back. If you do this, we will gladly stand by you. If you don't, there's nothing we can do. Did you hear these old men's advice? If we were listening, what do you want us to do? I can't do it. I'm too weak. And my blindness makes it impossible. I can perform the ritual and the prayers. But where is this place? Can somebody show me? Go into the grove. Beyond the trees, you'll find the acolyte who guards the spring. He'll tell you everything. Antigone, look after our father while I undertake the sacrifice. Nothing is too much trouble. 
when a parent's well-being is at stake. Terrible things, Major. I know. To serve long sleeping memories of pain. But I'm longing to hear you tell. What now? Oh, dreadful story. Those others will have shake you down to incurable suffering forever. For friendship's sake, let that tale remain untold. The shame I've suffered and suffer. But everyone knows it. So much better to hear. The authentic version instead of the rumor. I can't. But we're begging you to tell us so much to bear. Granted as a favor to us. Or giving you sanctuary. Here. What can I say? My agonies are unique. My punishments unparalleled. The gods well know I suffer for my ignorance. But, but what caused this? Bad luck? My infamous marriage. I never knew the truth. Thieves and meshed me in that horror. And are those lurid rumors true? That you shared your mother's bed as a lover? It's like death to hear it. But there's more to tell. These girls, they're mine, my blood. But closer. To you mean? These daughters, these curses. Darkness of hell. Were nursed by the woman who nursed me. And gave birth to us all. Then these daughters must have another name. Sisters. Sisters to their own father. These are never ending horror. Such suffering. It is unendurable shame. The crime! What crime? You committed! Never! I took my reward for saving the city. The Queen came as my greatest prize. And my greatest misery forever. That was the little. The blood you shed. Must you have all the details, every drop that was spilled? Your father. New wounds before the old have healed. You killed him! I killed him! But there's more to be said. What? Justice of a kind. What justice? I... Killed in ignorance a man who would have killed me. That blood I admit, but by the laws of gods and men, my innocence is revealed. Here is our king, the son of Aegeus, Theseus. You ask for him and he came. I've heard the story over and over again of the bloody mutilation of your eyes. And that alone would identify you as the son of liars. All the details they told me when I was coming here simply confirmed the fact. These scars on your face make me tell spent your identity quite certain. Let me call you long-suffering Oedipus and ask you what favour would beg on Athens, or of me, you and your companion, who endures what you endure. I come to offer you a precious gift, my scarred, battered, and exhausted body. Not much to look at, but worth much more. What is it worth? Why is it precious? Time will teach you its value. Not now, but later. Later? How much later? When will we know? 
when I am dead and you have buried me. Is that all you ask of me, a decent burial? Does the rest of your life not matter at all? If I am buried as I wish to be buried, no. Is that a small favour you ask of me? It isn't. It's crucial and hard to perform. I can guess the difficulties between your sons and me. They will want to take me back to Thebes. If they want you back, why not go with them? There's no honour in exile for a man like you. When I wanted to go, they would not have me. That seems childish to be resentful in your situation. Listen to me before you criticise. Certainly. I should make no judgments before I know the facts. My own sons had me thrown out from my native city and I'm a parasite. My return there is forbidden. Well, then why bring you back if you can't live there? An oracle has spoken. And force them to act. What force is there? Some threat of punishment. Yes, punishment here in this country. Well, you mean in battle, but there's no quarrel between us. Dear son of Aegeus, only the gods escape the penalties of age and death. Time undermines everything. Nothing can stop the inevitable process of decay. The earth itself is eroded. The bodies of men wither, shrink and die. Good faith dies too, and lies bear fruit and flourish. Between friend and friend, feelings slowly change, and between cities too. Distrust grows, love turns to hate, hate to love, and all joy in the passing of time, becomes sorrow. It's fair weather now between you and Thebes, not a cloud in sight, but time has an infinity of days and nights to live through you. And the slightest pretext one day will be more than enough to cut down friendship with whole regiments of swords. I shall be long in my grave, sleeping, a forgotten corpse, but it is then that my cold body will drink their hot blood. If Zeus still rules, and Apollo his son keeps his word. Before you arrive, my lord, this man swore he had this power to bless our land. He offers us friendship. Who in his right mind would reject that? In addition, as a friend and citizen of a city allied to us, he has a right to our hospitality. And in coming to ask a favour of our goddesses, he honours the city and me and speaks of blessings in return. I respect all these things and think highly of them. Our city's protection is his for the asking. Now you will be responsible for his well-being unless he would rather return to Athens with me. Choose Oedipus, which of these two courses you prefer. We will be guided by your wishes. Gods, these men are worth a See, What is your decision? Will you come with me? I would. But this is the place. I must stay. Why here particularly? Speak freely, I won't stop you. The people who banished me must be defeated. And your being here, that will bring us the blessing. You will see the proof if you stand by your promise. My word can be relied on as much as any hope. But if you leave me... What are you afraid of? My enemies are coming. So these fellows will protect you. But if you go... I understand the situation. I'm sorry. I'm frightened. But I am not. But you don't know the threats. I know one thing for certain, that no one will take you from here or anywhere against my will. I've heard threats before. Noisemakers and bullies are always very free with them. Very rarely do they come to anything when people calm down and assess the situation rationally. These people may have spoken very grandly of taking you away. Any voyage of that kind will be across very stormy seas. I can promise them that. Don't be afraid. Apollo is your protector as much as I am. Besides, you will find my name is enough, even when I am not here, to keep you safe. <laughs> Your long journey has brought you here, stranger, to Colonus of the White Rocks, whose very name invokes all beauty, all loveliness, as if the air breathed poetry. The horses we breed here are world famous, and nineteen years sing their incomparable song 
endlessly in the leaf shrouded glade, in wine dark ivy, where the luscious vine dangles its fat unction, and dance within, hidden from the sun, where no breezes breathe or winds air, the shrine of the nymphs so nurse the rest, the drunken god of wine. Fair like star clusters, molasses shines, watered each dawn by the dew. Close by the crocus golden eye glitters like an ancient garland that trines flowers for jewels in the goddess's hair. There, the pure and gushing spring flows ever unsleeping to the river Cephasus, and its fertile valley floor is always watered and always green, and the dark soil swells and brings to birth all the fruits of the earth. The song of the muses can be heard in these trees. And the queen of love is riding in a dove-drawn chariot with a golden rain. There the grey-leaved olive grow, self-sufficient, self-engendered, superior to anything that Asia knows or the Dorian farmer ever tended. A terror to all our foes. For its rich oil breeds up our sturdy youth. So that no brash young general or experienced commander can ever uproot, pillage, or thunder our silver gray groves. For Zeus the unsleeping guards this precious earth with his vigilant thunder. And gray eyed Phoebe herself protects the land that she loves. The greatest the gift of all these, and the people of Athens' greatest boast, is her skill at horsemanship and mastery of the seas. Almighty Poseidon, son of Cronos, you first fathered our glories in these quiet meadows, when you taught us to tame wild horses and bring them under the bit, and how to carve the slender oars to fit the oarsman's strength that drives the sweeping blade. And how to roam like a team till the galleys sing strikes as the fifty nereids go by and across the dangerous waves. Yes, everybody in the world praises Athens. Now you must live up to that reputation. What's happening? Antigone. Crayon is coming with a squad of soldiers. He's heading this way. Attention. Look, you have been generous to me. Help me to finish my journey in peace. Oh, my friend. We may be old. And the tree is young. And for the Gentlemen, good people of Colonus, I can tell from the look of panic in your eyes that you're afraid of me. You need not be. Nor need you shout at me or be abusive. I haven't come to make trouble. I'm too old for that. And this is Athens, a city without equal for power and reputation in Greece, as I know very well. In fact, it was probably because of my age that I was chosen to talk to your guest, to persuade him back to Thebes. I am here representing the whole city, you understand, not just one man. And as his brother-in-law, too, I was the natural choice, sharing with him the dreadful anguish of our unlucky family. Oedipus, you've suffered enough. Listen to me. Come home. Now. We want you back. The whole city is asking for you, and it's right they should, and I personally, even more than all the rest. Indeed, I'd be an utter blaggard if I weren't. I'm heartbroken to see you in this condition, on the road, like a tramp. This one girl as your companion and helper. And who would believe that she could ever descend into poverty as appalling as this? She's very young. To be compelled to, to nurse you, nurse your miseries. She should be married. Has no chance while she's on the road and penniless. More likely she'd be easy meat for rape, unprotected on the public highway. I... 
We're all at fault. I am. You are. Public scandal in our whole family, and it's in the open. It can't be covered up. Oedipus, for the family's sake, listen, and for all the gods our fathers have worshipped. It's time to draw a veil across the whole shameful subject. Remove it from the public eye. Come home with me to your father's house in your own city. Thank these Athenians, they've been kind. But Thebes bred you, and you belong with her. <laughs> you brazen hypocrite. Every decent motive, every kindly gesture you manipulate to serve your own advantage. Do you expect the rabbit to be caught twice in the same snare for a double dose of misery? Once upon a time, I was so horrified by what I had done that I was desperate for exile. And you, said low, refused to allow it. But later on, when time had soothed the pain and the quietness and comfort in my own home was some solace to me, then you decided to kick me out like a dog at the back door, booted into exile. Family feeling, under relationship, you didn't give a damn for either. And now, once again, you see me kindly treated by all these decent people, welcomed by their city. So naturally, you want to drag me away. And you disguise a hard-headed political tactic with an appearance of generosity and concern. Uh, let me tell you, your friendly offers are not wanted yet. Let me make it clear the real reason why you want me back. Not to set me up in comfort in my old home, but to plant me at your frontier like a border fence to keep the peace for you with Athens. Do you think this kind of talk does me any harm? You suffer for it, I don't. As long as you've made as little impression on these people as you do on me, I'm satisfied. You're a fool, and old age hasn't made you any wiser. You bring shame on the whole of your generation. Uh, call off your bully boys. I'll not leave you. This is my last home. Yeah, that's finished with you. Let these men bear witness how you insult your own. But when I do get hold of you... You won't. My friends here will take care of me. I can make you suffer without touching you. What do you mean? What have you done? Ah, uh, you have two daughters. My men have arrested one of them already. Oh, and the other I'll take now. No, no. You shout before you, you're hurt. You've got my daughter. I'll take this one too. Good friends, Athenians. Don't betray me. The laws of the gods mean nothing to this man. Drive him from your country. Away you go, foreigner. There's no justice in what you... Who oh, what you're doing now? It's time to move. You get hold of the girl. If she won't come, drag her away by force. Oh, no, 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 Somebody help me. Stranger, what are you doing? Keep the man if you like. The girl is mine. Athens, do you have leaders? Sir, this is unjust. Furious justice. How can it be? She's Stephen, therefore mine. Athenians, help me. Don't touch her, stranger. The door is mine. Drop to her face. Get back. When she's free. If you touch me, I'll see this will be a war. I warn you. I tell you that girl is As for you, your two little walking sticks are broken now. Stagger as best you can without them. Since it pleases you to abuse your friends and damn your country, whose representative I am honored to be, although I'm royal rank, carry on by all means. Enjoy yourself. You'll learn in time that you're your own worst enemy. Your uncontrollable temper and spite towards your friends have caused enough problems for you in the past, and now, once again, you'll live to bring it. Don't you dare touch me! You! You're a piece of girls! I see. Then I shall claim the bigger prize, something worth more than two young women! What are you doing? I'll take the man! Do you dare to say that? I'll dare more than say it, I'll do it! Not if our king can stop you! Uh, you shitless enough to lay hands on me! Yeah. Oh, I'm quiet! Quiet! 
terrible goddess is who inhabit this place. Let me say one more thing, one more curse in your presence. You swine, listen. Do you see my eyes? They are dark, they've been dark for years. And now you've taken the one person who replaced them, my daylight from me. May the God of daylight, the sun, reward you and all you love with misery and suffering and an old age like mine. Do you hear all this? They hear me and they see your brutality and they know the only strength I have left is the strength to curse. I've had enough of all this, old as I am and without my soldiers. I'll take you myself! No, no, no! Not save me now! How dare you! You won't get away with it! Yes, I will! Sebastian has no more fights for the weak or when he fights for justice! Do you hear his raving? Yes. His whole noise and note from him! Thanks, also, that you know much less! Sorry, Pete! You'll have to put up with this! Did you just leave us with weapons in your hands? Our sovereignty is flouted! So the shouting, what's going on? I was making my sacrifice at the altar of Poseidon, the most powerful local god, when this noise interrupted me and brought me here faster than I intended. Tell me what's happening. My good friend, none of this man's voice more welcome. This man has attacked me. What man do you mean? What has he done? This man, Crayon, is he still here? He's taken from me all I have left. My daughters! You start, God. Every word I've said is true. All right, one of you, as fast as you can, go to the altar. Tell them to cut short the sacrifice. Make their best speed, both horse and foot, to the place where the main road fox. The cavalry at full gallop. The two girls and their captors must not pass that point. I must wipe the smile off this foreigner's face. If he thinks that he can make a fool of me with an arrogant show of force, get a move on, man. An order is an order! This man can thank his stars that I have learned to control my anger. If I were to treat him as he deserves, he'd leave here in a sorry state. However, he shall have more, or as much of it as he acknowledges in his own actions. You, sir, will stay exactly where you are until those two girls are brought back here and stand in front of me. Your behavior is insulting to me, and a disgrace to yourself, your own people, and your country. Justice is the ruling principle of Athens. We live by the rule of law, not force. And you come barging in, ignoring everything we stand for here, for all the world, like a robber baron, plundering everyone and everything at your own whim. Well, perhaps you think there are no men in this city but only cringing lackeys, and that I myself have nobody to consider. Did you learn this sort of behavior in Steve? No, oh, Theseus, you are wrong. It wasn't because I thought the men of this city lacked guts or good sense that I acted the way I did. <laughs> it's very simple. I didn't think that you would take such a liking to one of my relations as to keep him here against my wishes. I felt absolutely certain that no one would want to protect the despicable criminal who killed his own father and incestuously married his own mother, fathering incestuous children. The hill of Ares and the shrewd counselors who meet there, the symbol of Athens, in a justice and a wisdom, world famous as such, would hardly give political asylum to an old wandering reprobate. I felt sure of that and therefore entitled to arrest him. It was my business, not yours. <laughs> Doesn't that sort of abuse make you I think to myself, whose old age do you think is more degraded, mine or yours, by this sewer? The vile accusations you so much delight in, the incest and the murder and all the rest of it. I didn't intend any of these actions. I endured them. The gods took their pleasure of me. Paying back, I suppose, some old sin of my ancestors. 
because you will find nothing in me. No guilt, no sin, however assiduously you look, for which these crimes I unwittingly committed, damning myself and all my family, could be just punishment. You will say anything in front of anybody, even things better left unsaid. You, you shame me in public in front of all these decent people to degrade me in their eyes. And then when Theseus' name is mentioned, you grovel and you sing fulsome praises of Athenian wisdom and Athenian government, not realizing that flattery means nothing to a city like this that knows how to honor the gods. And then, in the same breath, you try to kidnap me, an old man, in the middle of my prayers, in a sacred place, having already seized and dragged away my daughters. That is an insult to these goddesses. And I call upon them to help and defend me and the people of this country who will soon show you that they are men to be reckoned with. Oh. Theseus, this man is innocent, a helpless victim of terrible punishment. We must help. All right. Move out. The man who came to arrest innocent people has been himself arrested. The hunter is caught in his own net. Profits craftily made and without sound backing are the soonest lost. I suppose you had allies. You would hardly have planned such a daring raid yourself. But here they can't help you. I shall see to that. We can't allow the state to be threatened by one man's arrogance. Do you understand me? Or are my words as worthless as good sense always is to a man plotting mischief? I have no quarrel with you. Not here. When I get back to Thebes, I shall know what to do. Threaten me, by all means. At quick march! Oedipus, stay here. Be confident that I shall bring your daughters back. Nothing but my own death will stop me. The gods give you good luck, Theseus, for your generosity and your kindness. <laughs> Who would wish to be anywhere but when our enemies turn to fight and the voice of bronze is heard in the air? The clash of shields, the swords bite. Perhaps their vanguards meet where the Pythia guards Apollo shine by the shore, or where the sacred torchlight brightens the Bay of Eleusis. Divine Demeter. A fertile queen and her dark daughter enacts their mysterious rites beneficial to men. And the vow of secrecy is sworn like a golden seal on the lips of their acolytes. And there I see Theseus denying these raiders escape from our land and rescuing Oedipus' daughter with his own invincible hand. On men, train chariot wheels, or their straining horses speed and savage. Ascend of the past, snowy bridges and fells, and we see out of us west and faster. Have you seen the war god's bloody face as his terrible chariot thunders nearer? Awesome, that sight, and features no less as his brilliant squadrons pass. The harness glitters on easy rain, each horseman sweeps by in a gleam of frost to prove himself best of Theseus' men. A fearless praises they sing, and the mysterious birth of Poseidon. Bursting like a living earthquake from his mother, the earth. Is it now the fighting? Will they soon fight? Something tells me that before tonight, we'll come face to face with these girls who've endured such suffering at their own family's hand. Zeus will bring all the anguish we endure to a mysterious conclusion and victory and peace out of all this destruction. All to be free is a burning fight. To look at all like an adult on this struggle. From the clouds where Olympia lies! Transition to the immortals! All seeing Zeus, grant this much to us! That our local militia should distinguish themselves in this battle! In ambush or cavalry charge! And may subtle Athene Zeus, grey-eyed daughter, Apollo the hunter, and his dear slaying sister Artemis, combine their powers to bring peace! Guarantee of the 
Stranger, you have traveled far, but my instincts didn't betray me, and now my eyes confirm it. Your daughters are coming, escorted by soldiers. <laughs> Is it true? Father, dear father, if only some god could give you eyes again to see this great man who has rescued us. My girls, are you really here? Yes, both of us oh, here. My two precious girls. Even daughters are precious. Oh, my life depends on you. One sadness supports another. I could die now without complaining. No bitterness with you two here. Stay close. On each side, embrace me as I embrace you. This is rest. After all my many years wanderings, this is peace. Tell me, what happened? Oh, keep it brief and to the point. The simplest words are the most suitable for young women. <laughs> this man saved us. Let him tell the story. Is that brief and womanly enough? <laughs> oh, oh, my good friend. Bear with us, you know, all our tears and laughter, this this long drawn out reunion. I, I thought I'd lost them forever. I understand very well that you are the man I must thank. I made a promise to you, old friend, and I kept it to the letter. They're back, alive, and none the worse for their abduction. As for the skirmish, well, why waste words on that? Your daughters will tell you, when they will boast for me far more effectively than I can. <laughs> there is one thing, though, I'd like to ask. A small detail, probably not important, which came to my notice on the way back here. I value your opinion, and I, I never think it wise to ignore odd or inexplicable occurrences. Did you tell me about it, son of Aegis? We know nothing of the matter here. A man, so they tell me, claiming to be a relative of yours, but not from Thebes, was found seeking sanctuary at Poseidon's altar, where I was praying myself before I was called here. Where does he come from? What favor does he ask? Only one thing they've told me. He asks, apparently, to speak with you. A brief word, nothing more. About what? Sanctuary is a serious business. Simply to speak with you, they say, then go back the same way he came unharmed. But... Who would go to such a length to speak to me? Oh, some relative of yours who comes from Argos or thereabouts and needs a favour. Not another word, my friend. What's the matter? Don't ask me. Don't ask you what? Tell me. Argos gave the game away. I know who it is. What has he done to provoke such antipathy? He is my son. And I hate him more than any other man. But the man is praying. There are questions of religious custom involved. I think you must hear him. Father, listen. I know that I am young to give you advice. But let the king have his way and satisfy his conscience by giving the gods their due. For our sakes, too, as his sisters, let our brother come. There's no need to be afraid of him. What can he say that can injure you or weaken your resolve? There could be no harm in hearing him, surely. In fact, questionable motives, if he has any, will be quite obvious in what he says. He is your son, and whatever wrongs he has done you, however unfilial he may have been, it can hardly be right for you, as his father, to pay him back by treating him equally badly. Or let him speak to you, at least. <laughs> Other fathers have ungrateful sons and uncontrollable tempers, but most men accept the good advice of friends and family. Forget today, remember the past. Your own undeserved punishment and the resentment you felt towards your parents. Anger uncontrolled is evil in itself and leads to terrible consequences. How can you forget that? Every day your blinded eyes remind you. Say yes, father, to please us. We shouldn't have to beg for him when what we ask and what he asks is just. You've been well treated here. Treat him with similar consideration, at least. Yes. Yes. You must have your way. However painful the consequence is for me. I can refuse you nothing. But if he must come, Theseus, my friend, 
Be sure I'm well guarded. Don't leave me in his power. One word is enough, sir. I need not boast about it, but you need have no fear. When I'm safe in the gods' hands, you're safe in mine. desperate for long life and will willingly prolong his grief for more than a man's span of years is a fool to his last breath. For what does old age bring but biting pains and bitter tears and pleasures few and decreasing? Later or sooner, the same death, not with marriage songs but funeral weeping, delivers us all to the earth. Not to be born, is best. For being born, to waste no time in lingering, but return to the dark, our beginning and end. Youth soon passes, like a carnival of frivolity. Horror and pain follow behind, realities bleak and inescapable. Greed, envy, rapine, civil war and carnage. Old age only increases the torment. Short of friends and breath, you struggle on towards the last crisis. And I know I am not unique. Everyone in the end must learn to suffer. <laughs> As Oedipus does, a long persecuted guest, like an exposed rock in a savage waste of northern seas, pounded by waves, sucked and torn by remorseless tides, he endures elemental forces of destruction, blasting him like the four winds from the blood red west and the silver dawn, where the sun rides like a burning ship in mid heaven and the frozen midnight ocean. Father, our visitor is coming. A stranger we spoke of. He's coming quite alone. And his eyes seem to be full of tears. Who is he? We made a good guess. It is Polynices. And now he's here. Sisters, my dear sisters. I don't know where to begin. Who to pity more? Myself or my father? An old man alone in a foreign country with only you two to look after him. Filthy old clothes all worn out and squalid, making him look worse even than a beggar down and out. White hair blowing across his forehead, tangled and knotted with the wind and stone blind. That dirty little bag, I suppose, carries what scraps he gets to eat. And it's my fault, I see it now, late in the day, admittedly. And it's unforgivable of me, of course. I don't need anyone else to tell me that I have treated you abominably. I know I have. I accuse myself. There's no need to call witnesses. I'm guilty. The verdict's given, the sentence passed. Why won't you speak to me? Say something, Father. Don't turn me away without a word. Will you send me back the way I came, with nothing but contempt and silence, without even telling me why you're angry?
Antigone, his maid. You're his daughters, my sisters. Persuade him to say something at least. Not just this surly affectation of dumbness. I have prayed at the gods' altar with all due reverence and ceremony. To ignore my prayer is an insult. He can't send me away without even speaking. Oh, brother. Tell him yourself what you've come for. Keep talking. Something you say might please him, or provoke anger or pity. Anything but this silence. I take that point and I'll tell him everything. But first, I appeal to the god Poseidon, at whose altar I was praying. The king of this country found me there and brought me here to speak with you. And promised me safe conduct for my departure. The promise which I hope you gentlemen and my sisters and my father will see fully honored. Well, father, let me tell you why I have come here. I have been banished, driven out from the city of my birth, because I asserted my undoubted right as your eldest son to your sovereignty and throne. My younger brother, Etiocles, was behind my banishment. There was no debate, not even any fighting. He seized power somehow by persuading the people to support him. He made good propaganda with the curse on your name, infecting me with the same disease. I've spoken to soothsayers, and they all say the same. So I went down into Dorian territory, to the city of Argos. There I married the daughter of Adrastus, and made good friends with some of the best-known military men in the Peloponnese. I planned an alliance with them, a treaty of seven signatories for a seven-pronged attack on Thebes. If you please have taken what was mine by right, and I promised myself to take it back or die honorably in the attempt. And why am I here? I'll tell you. I've come to ask a favor. For myself, and on behalf of my allies. Seven generals with seven private armies who now, at this moment, are making dispositions with their troops across the whole plain of Thebes. And I speak for them all in asking you for the sake of your daughters, for your own sake, to put an end to your anger against me and support us as we take the field to punish my brother who has seized the power and position that are mine by right. The oracles, if they can be trusted, all say the same thing. The ones that have you on their side will win this battle. Listen, Father. Love Thebes. Remember those fountains of the local gods we were brought up with? Father, listen. We're both in the same boat. Both outcasts and exiles. Both begging, when it comes to the point, forced to crawl merely for the bread to live on, while he, my brother, with no right to the throne, lives like an emperor and laughs at us. I can't bear to think of it. I'll stop him with your help. I'll whip him out like a stinking dog. Reinstate you in the comfort you deserve. And finally, when I've finished him off, establish myself in the place that belongs to me. Your support will make my victory inevitable. Without it, I don't know how I can survive. Oedipus, you must answer him for the king's sake. He can't be dismissed without some reasonable reply. Yes. What these youths thinks matters to me. If he hadn't sent him and asked me to speak to him, he would never have heard one word from my lips. I will grant his request by giving him the sort of answer he deserves in words he will never forget. 
or remember with any pleasure. Be you, you're contemptible. When you were in power, with that same sovereignty that your brother has seized firmly in your hands, you kicked me out. Me, your own father. You exiled me, made me a stateless refugee, forced me to wear these worn out rags, this very same filthy coat you weep such crocodile tears over now, being yourself in a predicament not unlike mine. Tears be nothing. What a tears that is such mental indulgence. This must be born, and will be born by me until my death. You, as far as I'm concerned, are nothing more than my murderer. You threw me out, opened up whole new worlds of pain for me, turned me into a beggar dependent on other men's charity merely to stay alive. And I would have died too if I hadn't had daughters as well as sons. My sons cared nothing for me. These girls kept me alive. They looked after me. They are my sons, doing everything and more than men could do. And you two, you and your brother, you two are bastards if ever men were. No sons of mine. If there is any justice, any moral law instituted by Zeus and like him eternal, then you're damned for sure. You and all your projects. And now, God, get out. Get right away from here. I disown you. Come! No father for you here or anywhere. Only this curse. My malediction echoing forever in your ears. You will never defeat your own people. You will die. Your brother will kill you and you will kill him. The one who banished you as you banished me in one moment of fraternal slaughter. My curse is on you! And I call on all the gods of the dead to take you both to your true home in the most unrelieved darkness of the bottomless pit of hell. And there is the god of blood who provoked this hatred between brothers and the ferocious goddesses on whose sacred ground we stand. Get out! And shout it aloud on every street corner in Thebes and tell your famous friend Oedipus Testament the inheritance he has divided between his loving sons. I was suspicious of you, Polynices, and your motives from the moment you got here. Now, make yourself scarce. Is that all? After such a long journey, so many high hopes and friends who trust me. Nothing. Less than nothing. We marched from Argos, full of optimism. You reward us with curses. But I can't tell them that, can I, or turn back now? I must advance towards whatever the outcome is and keep my mouth shut. Well, sisters, you heard his curses. If they come true, and if you manage to get back to Thebes, for God's sake, remember, I'm your brother. See that I'm properly buried, decently, with the proper ceremonies. Everyone will praise you for looking after him in exile. But how much more famous you'll be for caring for me, too, when I'm helpless. After I'm dead. Oh, I see, sir. Listen. You must do one thing for me. My sweet little Antigone, what one thing is that? 
Turn back your army, back to Argos now. Stop the war. Don't destroy yourself and Thebes. Not possible. How could I ever lead an army again if they see me flinch now? Penalty, brother, why should you ever want to lead it? What's the point in destroying your own city? The alternative is permanent exile, acquiescence and dishonor, and a younger brother's contempt. But it's forecast stats for both of you. You're doing your best to make those prophecies come true. Well, that will please him. Oh. I can't turn back now. Heavens, but your men will never follow, not when they hear the prophecy. But they won't hear it, I won't tell them. A good general is always optimistic. He keeps bad news to himself. My love, will you go on as if nothing had happened? Yes, I'll go on. Don't try to stop me. The way ahead is reasonably clear. It's dark, and there are terrifying prospects and ghastly images lurking in the shadows. But I have no choice. Your road, sisters, will be better lit. Gods, I hope, will be kinder to you, particularly if you carry out my last request. After I am dead, a decent burial. All the present, there is nothing you can do. So let me go and say goodbye forever. Look in my eyes. I'm seeing them for the last time. Oh, God, brother, my brother. Don't cry. I don't tell me not to cry. You're going to your death. It's certain, and you know it. If it's certain, I must endure oh, it. For God's sake, listen. I tell you, listen. Well, be quiet. I can't go. How can I know you won't come back? Knowing is the prerogative of gods, not men. Who knows anything? Good luck to you both. Oh, may those who control our destinies give you some chance in life. You're innocent. That much is the least you deserve. Oh. More suffering, more pain from the blind man's anger. That, or the unseen power of fate, which is always a mystery, and your last wishes, never in vain. For time is the eye of mortality, watching some men rise, and some go under on the wheel of destiny. <laughs> To your needs. His main needs. Send a messenger for Theseus, my friend. I need him now. Why do you need him? What's happening, father? The thunder is the voice of Zeus, speaking in the hour of my death. There isn't much time. <laughs> Inside here, I hear the land was there, my spirit to us, they both. And now, behind me, the virgin will be the flame of the Pentecost Gods only appear like this when something tremendous is happening. <laughs> This is the hour of my death, as the oracles promised. No avoiding it now. How can you tell? Is a thunder a sign? I know, and it is. Get the king, quickly, fetch him here. There isn't a moment to lose. Where is the prince? Is he coming yet? He must get here while, I, while I'm still conscious. There's something important. You have to tell him. I made him a promise to him and his country in return for kindness. I must make it good. No.
the second time I am desperate shouting out for my own people and our foreign guests calling me back. Is it this terrible storm, the sky on fire with lightning, all the weaponry of the heavens in action? All men are nervous to see the gods' power so nakedly demonstrated. I needed you, Prince, and now you are here to take the good luck the gods have given you. What's happening, son of Lyas? Something new and strange? My time has come. I made a promise to you and your city. Now I must fulfill it. No man can foretell his death. How do you know? The gods themselves forewarned me by signs and omens they taught me to recognize. What signs? Do you recognize them now? These repeated thunderclaps and flashes of lightning. The whole artillery of the immortals exploding over my head. I had good reason to believe you. You make prophecies and the events follow. What must I do? And what I am about to reveal to you, son of Aegeus, is treasure beyond price. Knowledge. Your city must keep secret and living till the end of time. In a moment, I shall lead you myself without anyone to guide me to the place where my life will come to an end. That place must remain your secret. Nobody else must ever know of it, not even what neighborhood. And that secret will give your city strength greater than regiments of Athenian infantry or powerful allies. This secret power will give you an advantage over the people of Thebes, that nation sprung from the harvest of the dragon's teeth for all time. Discords arise between neighboring states, however justly they are ruled, and men go to war for the sake of insult or interest, and even for the most frivolous of motives, the gods are always watching. They see wickedness and injustice when it occurs, when rational men become lunatics and mankind suffers for it. The gods always repay such tyrannies in their own good time. Never, Theseus, give them cause to repay you in that manner. <laughs> I know I need not tell you. You understand these things as well as I do, and could teach me. Now, well, I think it is time for me to go. Some instinct tells me the way, as though a god's hand were in mine and leading me. My two girls follow, Follow me. You have guided my footsteps for so long, and now it is my turn. No, don't touch me. I can find my own way, quite unaided, to my mysterious grave. The earth of Athens that will hide my bones like a shroud forever. This way, this way. Ah, yeah. The angel of death is here, Hermes himself. I feel his chilly finger, and I can see Persephone in a black veil, beckoning me into her silent kingdom. Sun, daylight, which has been no light to me for years. I saw you once. I remember how good you were. And now I can still feel you. Your life-giving warmth here on my face for the last time. Now I go down with faltering steps to the last darkness, the blindness of eternity. Theseus, you have been my best friend, my blessing on you, your land, and your people. Be famous and prosper. And in your prosperity, remember me 
among the dead. Can you hear our prayers in your dark country, queen invisible to human eye? At Hades, master of the dead, let there be no pain as the old man dies, nor any tears as he goes to his bed in the earth and enters eternity. Let him take his place on the dark plain walking the endless fields of night. Unjust persecution, pain and suffering were his destiny. Justice and the end. This is his light. Take pity on him, powers of darkness. And you, many-headed dog of hell, slobbering in your chains at the gate that's always open, snarling at all who pass to their last everlasting state. Let him pass in peace and quietness into the grave fields of silence. Born of earth and horror, master of the deep, lead him down in reverence. Muzzle the beast. And bless this passing with eternal sleep. Impossible to do any justice to what happened in there, as briefly as that. I must tell the whole story. He's dead at last, then, that long suffering man. Be quite sure about that. He's crossed over into death. Did he suffer much, or did a god come for him? It was strange and marvelous. You all saw how he left us, moving with difficulty in his age, but leading the way himself instead of being guided by one of his friends. He walked as far as that great crack in the earth, the bottomless cave, where the rocks seemed like a stairway of bronze leading down into the dark. Nearby, there's a natural basin of rock, a place where many paths meet. Where the celebrated pact between Theseus and Perithous to raid the underworld and kidnap Persephone is commemorated. Everything there is sacred. Great chasm itself, the basin, the rock of Thoricus, the hollow pear tree, and the ancient stone tomb. Surrounded by these mysteries, he sat down and quietly removed all his filthy and worn-out clothes. And then he spoke to his daughters. He asked them to fetch some pure running water from a stream somewhere so that he could wash himself and pour an offering to the spirits of the dead. 
just nearby there's a small hill sacred to Demeter, goddess of growing things, which is always fresh and well watered. So they did as he asked, and soon brought the water and washed him with it and dressed him reverently and with all the ritual customary when a man is dying. And when he was satisfied that everything was done as it should be, he had his way in everything, they attended to his slightest whim. There was a low rumbling like thunder from the bowels of the earth. The girls were frightened and they cried and fell on their knees trembling with their arms clasped round his knees and they went on like that for some time crying out loud hugging themselves and swaying from side to side as if they were heartbroken. And when he heard them saw how upset they were he lifted them up put his arms round them and soothed them and said my dear daughters today I must leave you as all fathers must leave their children today is the end of me my life is over and your long penance is over too the never-ending task of looking after me which you performed without a complaint although I know how irksome and tiring it was one word though makes every burden lighter to bear and that word is love they all cried and they all embraced each other clinging so hard it seemed they could never be parted but eventually they were the crying stopped and there was silence and suddenly there was an unearthly voice a stomach turning sound so that you could see everyone trembling everyone's hair was standing on end this voice which was low and deep and must have been the voice of a god kept on repeating like a terrifying whisper oedipus oedipus your life is over to the very hour and now you linger too long too long and when oedipus heard this unearthly summons he asked for theseus to come close to him and when theseus was by his side he said my good friend listen i want you to promise and give your right hand on it and my two daughters you give him yours that you'll never leave them to their own devices and the world's mercy but do whatever seems best for them in the uncertain circumstances of the future and when this promise was given oedipus groped for his girls with his blind hands, and when he'd got them, he held them tight and said, Now, my girls, you must be brave as you were born to be. You must go away now and make no attempt to see things which are mysteries and are forbidden to you. Go quickly now. Theseus alone must stay to see what happens. We all heard that. And we were all in tears at his words. But then his daughters turned from him. And we turned with them and followed them away, leaving him there. But after a few moments, while we were walking, we looked round. And... Oh, please. The man was gone. He disappeared from the face of the earth. The king was there, standing on his own, holding his hand in front of his eyes as though it seemed something appalling which no living man could bear to see. And then formally, he made short prayers to earth and to heaven, stooping and raising its hand. And that was the end of it. how Oedipus died and by what strange rites of passage he passed from this world into the dark, no man living can say except Theseus. There was no lightning from heaven struck him, and no tidal wave swept him out to sea, but he was taken for sure. Perhaps some kindly ghost from the dark regions came to show him the way. Or the earth silently opened and silently took him with love, like a child to its bosom.
one thing is certain. There were no tears, no cries of pain, no sound of suffering of any kind. A stranger, more wonderful death than anyone has experienced before. Oh, some of you won't believe me, I know. You'll say this is fantasy or a bad dream in broad daylight, straining all credibility. If that's what you think, that's your privilege. I saw what I saw. And there's nothing more I can say. But where are the girls and the others who were with him? They were following me not far behind. Yes. I can hear them crying. They hear me. Howl then! Weep! Time for tears for us too! Nothing good can ever happen to Oedipus' daughters cursed in our corrupted blood! <laughs> We traveled and suffered with him so many years on his journey. Oh, this unforgettable ending. Mysterious beyond all human understanding. Tell us what happened. Let me guess. He is dead. As most men would wish to die. Not cut down in the pain and stress of battle or drowned at sea, but lifted by invisible hands to the sightless fields of eternity. The night sufficiently death-like descends on our eyes too, forced to beg our bread from strangers, without friends, in alien lands across dangerous seas, what bed or board for us among the outcast and rejected? None that I can see. Let the God of the dead lead us down with our long sufferings, Father, to rest. Why live for a life of pain among the persecuted? What the God's decree must be endured by the best of daughters. When grief blazes up like a fire in he decrees his own intention. Your sufferings are not the worst. All the pain I endured. How strange to discover that I long for those days of agony to return. Any anguish was bearable while I held my father in my arms. I would welcome such agony again. But now... The dark cloak of death forever enfolds him with its mantle of earth. My love survives. Even there, in that darkness. Among the dead. It lives. So now, it is an end. And his hopes are fulfilled. Fulfilled? How can that be? He wanted to die in a foreign land, among strangers. He is satisfied now. That shaded earth, let him lie at peace. He has left grief behind with us, who mourn his tragic destiny. My dear dead father, my eyes are blind with tears, my voice choked with singing your bitter serenity, and that song will never end. You died as you wished to die, among strangers, leaving me alone to mourn your mysterious passing. A bleak future for us. Never-ending misery. He had daughters to ease his pain. Fatherless, unprotected. Who will care for our suffering? Oh, God. 
house. Bless his time. Now he is his honor. And you must make the end of the weeping. Hey. Is the inheritance on We must go back. But why? I have to. I must. Why must you tell me? To see that yard of earth, his sanctuary. His grave. My father's. <laughs> the word chokes me. You can't. It's forbidden for anyone to go to that holy place. Don't be angry with me. But you must understand. Why must I? What new? There is no grave. And he sleeps the sounder. Take me to the place, and I will die there. Oh, God help me then. Bereaved twice over. Homeless and unloved. What would I do? Condemned to the misery of solitude forever. You need not be frightened. For our exiles, outcast. You came to no harm today. That's true. And you're quite safe here. For a time, at least. I knew that. Then tell us what is troubling you. That this exile may be permanent, but I shall never go home to Thebes. Don't try to go. From one sorrow to the next. No one's sufferings have been greater. And is this the worst? No, the worst is to come. On your sea and troubles, is the storm blows fiercer. We were born to this. Born to suffer. Which way, Zeus, shall we go now? Are you dumb to our pleading? No ray of hope for us. No word ever. Is there any road that leads to harm? This may be dry your tears. Death came gently. And we who are alive share the blessing which the dark lords of the underworld granted to me. Over indulgence in grief when miraculous favors have been granted, we'll make them angry. We must ask a favor. Ask it then, you are my children now. With our own eyes, we must see the place where our father lies. No, that is forbidden. But why? You're the king. Your word is law. His last request, dear daughter, was that no mortal should ever approach the place. Nor any hymns, nor sacred ceremonies be sung there above the hidden patch of earth which covers him and ensures his rest. He laid that responsibility upon me, promising good fortune to this city if I carried it out in spirit and to the letter. I swore I would do it. And there were gods listening who take note of men's promises. Then I won't ask again. It is enough if he wished it so. But may I ask for you to conduct us back in safety to our ancient city of Thebes? A war is brewing between our brothers, which I must prevent if I can before a river of blood flows and drowns both of them together. Of course I will. I will do anything I can to help you for your sake. And for my new and newly lost friend to please him in his secret grave. Now sorrow has run its course, and my tears must end. These events have come to a just close on holy ground. The gods are eternal.
and the life of man. Speck of dust on his race to Here and there in Oedipus at Colonus, we catch brief glimpses of the playwright himself, as the chorus describes the hazards of living so long, or when Oedipus quarrels so bitterly with his son. But how could Sophocles have guessed that before his play could be staged, he would himself be dead and Athens defeated? He was making a different connection, for when Polynices tells his sister that whatever happens next, he wants a proper burial, Sophocles was surely looking back to an earlier work and forward to the end of the Theban trilogy. And how did Sophocles finally die? According to one account, he hyperventilated while reciting from this play, Antigone. Until next time, I'm Michael York.